My name is Naria and I have the privilege today of welcoming you to Calvary. Thank you so much for joining us, especially those who are here for the very first time. Welcome. Just remember, if you have any children that are uncomfortable or really just can't sit still because they normally cannot, feel free to use our family lounge that is just outside the sanctuary in our nursery. And it's not just for the babies. We have an awesome, fantastic kids ministry for every kid every weekend. Before service starts, let me show you a little glimpse of who Calvary is. Hope you never have to leave. We're all friends and family. Come on in and open the door. Every creed, every age, every color, every sister and mother and brother. Everybody's got a seat at the table. Everybody's welcome here. Making smiles every year. I love how diverse our church is. Anyone can find a place to learn and grow. Every Wednesday, our kids are in junior theologians and our youth are in a safe space where they can grow and worship God. All while our adults are learning how to read through the Bible and how it can apply to their very own lives. And every Thursday, our young adults meet in a space designed specifically for young professionals from age 18 to 30. On a weekly basis, we have multiple campuses that meet, which include Calvary Espanol, Calvary Indian, and our Calvary Deaf Ministry. Hey, before service starts, let me show you more of who Calvary is. excited to begin. If it's your first time here, join us in the Welcome Center. We want to welcome you, offer you some refreshments, and give you a free gift. If you can't make it, no worries. Just text us, CC Guest to 94000, and we'll be in touch. All right, everybody, service is starting.
So good to see all of you. Let's worship the Lord today. Here we go. Today, amen. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this is your moment to praise Him. Let's put our hands together like this, church. And what we're gonna declare is that's my King, the one that's seated on the throne. Amen. I wish I could tell you, I wish I could describe it, but I can contain it, can't keep it to myself. There's not enough color to paint the whole picture. 
no words to ever say what I found Let's sing wonderful, come on Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy He is merciful and powerful Who are we talking about? That's my King We declare the glory Give Him all the honor All together worthy Who are we talking about? That's my King There's no one before you Yes, we will adore you All of this is for you Who are we talking about? King Calvary, let's give a shout of praise to the King of Kings in this place. Amen. Let's keep on worshiping, church. Come on. I'm not letting the rocks hide without joining the chorus. There aren't enough notes to make the harmony. It's the song of the angels, the all of the ages, all of the earth and heaven symphony. Let's declare wonderful, beautiful. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy He is merciful and powerful. Let's sing it out Who we're talking about, that's my King We declare the glory Give Him all the honor All together worthy Who we're talking about, that's my King There's no one before you Yes, we will adore you All of this is for you Who we're talking about, that's King, is he your king today, Calvary? Let's sing this part together in faith. Come on. That's my king. That's my God. That's my shepherd. My protector. That's my king. That's my rock. That's my rock. That's my anchor. My defense. One more time, church. That's my king. That's my God, that's my shepherd, my protector, that's my king, that's my rock, that's my anchor, my defender. Who we talking about? That's my king. Let's clap it up. We declare the glory, give him all the honor, all together worthy. Who we talking about? That's my king. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor. All together worthy. Who we talking about? That's my king. There's no one before you. Yes, he will adore you. All of this. All of this is for you. Who we talking about? That's my king. Who we talking about? That's my king. Who we talking about? Come on, Calvary. to praise the king of kings the king of ages the one that is seated on the throne today and the one that is in control amen so i don't know what situation you may be walking into this place but we believe that our god is above it all amen and we know we don't lean into our own understanding that we trust our god with all our heart amen because our god is more than able He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever think or ask. So today, this is your moment to speak faith into your future. This is your moment to say, I trust in God. So let's sing this song together, church. This is for our Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit and washed in His blood. And what He did for me on Calvary is more than enough. Let's sing this together. I trust in God. Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never 
sing it out because you know it to be true. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I will walk by faith. I will walk by sight. By faith, I won't walk by sight. Cause I trust in God. If you can testify that today, let's sing. Yes, I trust in God. Let's sing. I will walk by faith. I will walk by faith. I will walk by sight. I will walk by faith. I will walk by sight. Cause I trust in God. If you trust Him today, just declare it with an open mouth. Trust in God, cause our God can do all things. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the beginning of the end, and He's more than able. He's more than able. And you are more than able. If that's your testimony today, just declare with confidence that you are more than able. If you're waiting for your breakthrough, just declare this today. You are more than able. In the middle of the storm, our God is more than able, church. And you are more than able. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? We sing anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible in the name of Jesus. Anything is possible. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? You can do all things, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. Come on, right now, across this house, just put your hands as high as you can to heaven and make a declaration. Come on, say, God. Come on, say, God. You are able to do anything in my life. Come on, give God a praise today. He is able to do greater things than we can imagine or think this morning. I wanna, I wanna pray for you right now. We just sang He's able, now let's believe He's able, right? Not just a song, but a confession of faith. We believe today, God, you're able today. You're able to heal my body, uh, save my wayward child. You're able to restore my broken marriage. You're able to give me provision. God, you're able. Come on, say, God is able. And so if you're facing a situation in life today, you say, Marty, I need God's help today. Wisdom, strength, restoration, healing, doesn't matter. God is able today. I want to pray over you right now. Put your hand up high. All you're saying is, I need some help from on high today. Got a situation in my family and my finances. Got a big uh, meeting this week in the company. Maybe I'm sick in body. I've got surgery coming up. No matter what you're facing, God is able today. And as I pray over you, let the Holy Spirit just fill your vessel, fill your being today, give you hope, give you courage, and, and strengthen your faith right now that God's able to work on your behalf. Receive the prayer. Father, we thank you today. God, that you're able to heal across this house, guide across this house, deliver across this place. God, for those in the house whose hands are raised high and those watching online, God, I declare right now over their life the power of the Holy Spirit to fall in a fresh and a mighty way. God, bring healing, bring deliverance, bring provision, bring restoration. God, break the shackles of bondage. God, deliver them from oppression and depression, anxiety and stress and much, much more. God, let your spirit rush in like a mighty wind 
win from on high. Bring refreshing, bring encouragement today, bring peace, bring clarity. Today, God, we declare by faith, you're able to move on our behalf. You're a good God, you're a faithful God, you're a loving God, you're a generous God, you're a kind God today. You love your creation. Thank you for your powers, your miracles, your promises, and your word today. And today we receive them into our own life, God, into our marriage, into our finance, into our businesses, God, into our family, into our community, God, into our city, into our nation, into our world, God. We declare today that you're a God that brings us hope. God, brings us restoration. Today, you do this by, by the promise of your word today, God. And we declare all this today in the mighty name of Jesus, the, the matchless name of Jesus, the Son of the true God, Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We declare this by faith today in the name above every other name, the name of your beloved begotten Son, the one that gave his life for us upon the cross. We declare it in the name of Jesus and we say, let it be so, let it be so. And we say a big loud amen, amen today across this house. God is able. It is so good to see you the, the, the week after Easter, Resurrection Weekend. How many know that Jesus is still alive even this weekend? Yeah. We do not serve a dead God. He is alive today. We thank God for that promise in his word. We trust that promise from God's word today for our life. It is so good to see you in the house. Are you glad to be here today? Come on, you glad to be in the house of God? So good to see you guys. And, and we just wanna just briefly just say quickly, we, we wanna just uh, just take a second and just celebrate all the folks who took out membership this year at Calvary Church. Today is your official day as members of the church. So we just give you guys a big hand real fast. All the folks in the house who took out official membership of the body here, we thank God for that. And then we just thank God that we can once again gather together and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today in this wonderful space and place. Today. As you take your seat, look at your neighbor and say, man, you smell wonderful. We wanna go into our giving time today. Let me just do just a quick little, just a statement to you. Uh, when, when, we, when we gather, we give. Come on, say, when we gather. Come on, say, when we gather. Say, we give. Now, we give because God's a giving God. We did a focus last month on one church, one month. Come on, say it. One tithe, right? Let me just tell you, hundreds of individual families began to give for the first time ever at Calvary Church last month. Now. Let me just talk to you briefly real fast. The hardest thing in life is consistency. Who's ever had a challenge being consistent? Put your hand up. Uh, uh, another, another way. Who's ever started a Bible reading program and didn't finish it? Now you're not being honest. You're in the house of God today. No, it's the challenge in life, whether it's working out, dieting, uh, taking your spouse on a date night. I said that first service and lady went, amen. I'm like, not sure who she's married to, but he's on notice right now. He better get his act together. Consistency, you know, spiritual formation requires consistency. And in truth, spiritual formation requires just decisions. And so many of you begin to give for the first time ever. And I wanna just encourage you toward consistency because consistency over time builds your faith. It, it lets you see what God can do because our human nature, our human nature says, well, I did that um, and nothing happened. I, I, did that for, I did that for a whole month and nothing happened. It's like going to the gym one time and going, nothing happened. Well, yeah, it's just one time. And you're on your phone the whole time. Um, I, I took my wife on a date, nothing happened. Yeah, it's just one date. You, you have to keep moving in a direction of, come on, say consistency. And prayer, consistency in prayer, reading the Word of God. So I want to encourage you toward being consistent in your faith journey because here's the reality. Seeds are the premise of the faith, and seeds take time to grow. And so when you put the seed in the ground, 
believing in God's plan, you trust God with it and move forward, okay? So no matter how you give today, whether you give via text to give, whether you go online to give, whether you give with the QR code behind me right now on the screen, whether you give in the bucket as it comes by in just a second, no matter how you give, don't forgive why, don't forget why you give. We give because God's a giving God, amen? And so we love the idea that God's generous toward us, giving us this earth, this life, our next breath. God's gracious to us. So as you give today, don't forget that God's a giving God to you today. I'm gonna pray over you. You're gonna give. We'll worship God some more. Oh, and I almost forgot something very important. I'm wearing a baptism shirt. And that's because after the service today, the 11 o'clock service, we're gonna baptize people. And if you've not been baptized, today is your day, okay? We got folks already over here prepared to do it. We're gonna do it as soon as service is out. Uh, when the sermon stops, I'll start dunking. And I don't mean the donut place. I mean dunking in the baptism tank. If you've not been baptized today, I wanna to encourage you to think about this. In fact, if you wanna get baptized, uh, we have shorts for you, t-shirts for you. You say, Marty, what's baptism? It's real simple. It's the old sinful man being buried and raised to walk in a new life in Jesus Christ. How many thank God for new life in Christ today? And so if you wanna get baptized, today is your day. All you'll have to do is when the service completes itself, go clear to my left, to your right, to this door over here. We've got shorts for you, towels for you, hair dryers for you. And if you get baptized today, you get a free chicken sandwich at Chick-fil-A today. You have to go to the store and get it. It's at the store today. They're not open, FYI, I just wanna tell you that. All right, I'm gonna pray for you. You're gonna give, gonna hear the word of God then we're gonna celebrate new life in Christ, okay? I would love for you to get baptized. I'm doing the baptizing myself, so I'd love to do that for you today. If you have a chance to do so, text your friends now, call your family, say, today's the day I'm taking the plunge, get to church as quick as you can, okay? I'm gonna pray, you ready to give? Say yes. God, we thank you today for your blessings upon our life. You're a good and a faithful God. Receive today from happy and cheerful hearts. These your tithe and our offering. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you as you give today. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation cry God we praise you We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high with all creation cry God we praise you yes God we praise you amen thank you for being here today and being a part of worship you know we come and we give thanks to God for what he did this past week and then we look forward in anticipation for what he's going to do in the coming week amen Amen. Hey, if you're visiting today, we're so glad you're here, and we have a gift for you. If you'll meet us right out these middle doors here in the lobby at our visitor center, we'd love to give you this water bottle, tell you more about the church, how, how you can um, connect with us, how we connect, can connect with you. Um, so great to see everyone. Would you turn to somebody? We're going to begin our time in the Word. Just tell them you're going to hear something powerful today. Tell them that before you're seated. Good morning, church. How are you? Happy to be in God's house the week after Resurrection Weekend. Who enjoyed the celebration last week of Good Friday, Saturday night, Sunday, remembering that He is risen? And the good news is He's still risen today. My, my hope uh, as, as we go into the message today is to help us connect a little bit more 
how those events that we celebrated last weekend, that we celebrated what happened 2,000 years ago from a cross and an empty tomb, and how we connect those events to the events in our life today, and what the meaning is for us, not only of the life that Jesus lived, but the death that he died, and what that means for us. How do we connect the life of Christ to our life today? I'd like you to consider today not just one tomb, the empty tomb, but consider two. Consider not only the tomb from which Jesus rose, but the tomb to which someday you will go. Because we know this, it's appointed unto man once to die. And that's something that will be a reality for all of us. Now, Pastor Sean, you are not supposed to start a message with talking about death. You're supposed to start with a joke and then have three points in a poem, and then we go home. But can I tell you that, that if we never connect that grave to our coming grave, we'll never be able to connect Christ's life to our life. So I want to help us to put some things in perspective today because there's only two things that are actually guaranteed in life, death and taxes. You guys came up with that. That's amazing. I didn't even have to prompt you or put it on the screen. And it's, isn't it fascinating how we put that silly little temporal human government conversation about money, along with the conversation about our eternal souls and our life and the meaning of life? I mean, considering the weight and the balance of taxes and death, like, which is more weighty? And yet, we know that death is coming, but are we prepared? Some of us are more prepared for our taxes than we are for the day that we will leave this planet. And and I know, you know, we, sometimes we plan for things and, and we prepare for things and they never happen. How many of you have ever stayed up and worried and fretted and lost sleep over something that never even happened? You know, and, and we'll prepare for something, we'll sometimes save up and then it just won't come to pass. There's probably some people here today that are still drinking that bottled water you saved up for Y2K 24 years ago. And it's lasted you this long. Because it never happened. But one thing we do know is we will die. That will happen. So why are we not prepared? Why is the one thing we're definitely guaranteed in life, the one thing that always seems to catch us the most by surprise? We don't ever want to talk to that life insurance salesman, do we? We don't, we don't want to talk to, to anybody, a, a, an attorney, about our will. We, we don't want to think about those things because it feels morbid. It feels weird. Why does that feel weird when it's the one thing you know is going to happen with certainty? And so I want us to actually think about that in a more intentional manner today because life is short. It goes by quickly. Y-O-L-O, -O, YOLO. You only live once, right? So and if you actually look online, there's all kinds of hashtag YOLO, you know, I was just curious if I did a quick search. What, what does the world say we should do with this one short life that we have? And a, and a quick thing, this is, this is what the world thinks we should do. Life is short, break the rules. Uh, life is short, enjoy it. Makes, seems to make sense. Life is short, do what makes you happy. Life is short, have no regrets. Life is short, kiss slowly, okay? Life is short, don't worry. Life is short, love the one you're with, whatever that means. Life is short, don't take it seriously. Here's some other ones I read. Life is short, avoid negative people. Life is short, buy those shoes. <laughs> Life is short, eat more chocolate. Life is short, make it count. And my favorite, life is short, smile while you still have teeth. <laughs> That's pretty good right there. One that I found was life is short, follow your dreams. And this one showed up over and over again. Life's too short not to follow your dreams, not to live a life with purpose or meaning. But are all dreams worth following? And what does Scripture say 
about the purpose for our life and this one short life that we have. We do know that our one life is temporary, temporal, or limited by time, tempo. That's the root word of that. Every musician knows that word of time and timing. And the writers of the Psalms were musicians as well. In Psalm 34 and in Psalm 90, they tell us to, for, to reach for wisdom, that God would teach us to number our days or count our days because they are few. And someday all of those days are gonna be reduced to a dash between two dates on a stone. Above your body will be a stone with a birth date and a date of departure and everything you have lived for and done in between reduced to a dash. What an interesting concept. What will have happened with your one life that will last and make an impact beyond that dash. Charles Thomas Studd wrote this in his poem, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. And when I'm dying, how happy I'll be if the lamp of my life has burned out for thee. What a dream he had that his all, his everything would be expended for the glory of God and for the purpose of his kingdom. He had a dream. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream and it formed the substance of a message. He saw something, he lived for something. Do you have a dream? And is your dream God honoring? And is your dream God sized? What do you mean by a God sized dream? Here's what I mean. My mom used to always tell me and my brother this growing up that God will never use you below your ability and experience. But if, if it's what God has for you, it'll re require and utilize all of you plus him. It'll take all of you plus him to live a God-sized life and to live out a God-sized dream. We have one life, live it with purpose. And a life of purpose has to be lived on purpose. That won't just happen by accident. And I gotta be honest, when I hear these, these speeches and when I, when I go online and see these things and you can, you can pay for webinars and you can go to seminars and, and you can hear these people tell you about living a life with purpose and following your dreams and, and here's how to you know, pursue things that are gonna make you truly happy or, or truly fulfilled in life. And a lot of times, you know, I, I love that idea and I get fired up. I wanna live on mission. I want before my feet hit the floor every morning to be, be aware that my life has purpose this day. I'm living on mission, but I gotta be honest with you. Most mornings, my only mission is to get to coffee. Like, I would love to be that purposeful that every moment had this great sense of value and direction, but sometimes I'm just trying to get through the morning and get woke up. Sometimes it's just about getting through this day and I have a harder time focusing on anything bigger than the moment. But until we can really realize what is bigger than the moment, we'll never realize how big our moment is. And so, what I've been doing this year, something new, I've, I've normally, when I wake up and I pray in the morning, and before my feet hit the floor, my, my goal, my hope is to, to just connect with God. And, and I've always prayed a different prayer, but this year I've, I've tried something new. I'm praying the same prayer every morning. And I've been praying the Lord's Prayer just to focus my mind that before my heat, feet hit the floor, Lord, you are my Father and you are holy. Let your kingdom come, your will be done in my life today. God, you have a purpose for today. It's not about my purpose, my will, but it's about what you have for me. And so when I begin to put things in that right order, it helps me to realize I have a choice every morning to say this is the day that the Lord has made. Therefore, I will choose to rejoice and be glad in it because I have a choice every morning whether to, to recognize that day as a gift from God or something to just work my way through and try to endure. Life of purpose is lived intentional. You have to intend to do it. Living for purpose changes the way you go about your life. Athletes, when they train, it affects everything about their life. If your goal is to one day be in the NFL, the NBA, the, the MLB, if that's your goal, it changes what you eat. It changes where you spend your, your time and your weekends. It changes things about your life. 
It changes the fact that you let adults yell at you as a teenager because they're the coach. We don't put up with that in Walmart, do we? But why do you put up with that on the team? Because you know it's making you into something you wanna be. You know that this is guiding and disciplining your life in a direction that you want to go to live and experience your dreams. Paul talks about it, how athletes will train and discipline their body, will put restriction, will deny ourselves certain things, and will engage in certain things in order to pursue this dream. We have our World Vision team in the house today, bodies for, for running. Why? so that they can do something of benefit in the world to share the gospel and to bring life and, and literally bring actual water as well as living water to people around the world. Because when you live with a purpose, it changes your actions. It changes how you spend your time. If, if you're living with purpose that for investing, it changes how you view your resources. An investor knows every penny and they know where it goes and they know that saying yes to something is saying no to something else. So they're very intentional about every transaction, not just a few transactions in their life. They realize their resource is limited and it matters what they do with it. Will it be worthful or wasteful? Living on purpose is about active denying and yielding, intentional abstaining and embracing. And if you're gonna follow your dreams, dream wisely. Dream a God-sized dream Know every moment matters and know that there are things that many of us think matter that in the end won't matter at all. The melodic prophets of the 1970s called the band Kansas wrote these words, nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky, it slips away and all your money won't another minute buy, dust in the wind, all we are is dust in the wind. They realize the brevity of life, and it's fascinating that even in this, this secular song, if you will, that there's a recognition that things of monetary value don't have lasting value, that that's a value that at one point goes away. The money won't buy time, therefore, which has more value? How will you spend your days? Will you live them on purpose? The gospel writer of Mark in Mark 8, verse 36, says it this way, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Now, when I was growing up, we used to play this game. It was called Life. Anybody ever play the game Life? It was a board game. Let me explain that to this generation. Uh, you had to sit around a table with other people in the room. So... It wasn't something you did online. You actually had to be present for this to happen. And, and you had a physical box and you put the things out and then you would play. And, and in this game of life, you would go around this board and, and you could have a choice to buy a car. You could have a choice to go to college. You would have choices to, to maybe get married or not, to have kids or not. And, and you got all these opportunities. And yes, taxes were there too because we know that's one of the guarantees, right? And so... So you go around this board and the idea was when you get to the end, to be the first one there and to have the most stuff. And that's how you win, is by accumulating and doing the most in the time that you had in life. But that's not a real perspective of what is valuable in life. However, the game may be a more accurate illustration of what is of true value than it realized or intended to be. Because at the end of the game, no matter who won or lost, and no matter how much was accumulated, all the pieces go back in the box. And one day, no matter what you've done or what you've accumulated, everything is gonna go into a box. And you'll be there and people will walk by that box and they'll remember and they'll think. And my question is, what legacy will you have left? What will you have done with your time in the dash that will have impacted and left a meaning beyond those days? We all can leave a legacy and we can choose something about that legacy. Their leaders have left legacies like Washington or Lincoln or Hitler. We have choices to make. They have impacts. Artists have left legacies like Michelangelo and Picasso. Thinkers have left legacies like Nietzsche and Plato, Anselm and Pascal. These, these, these ideas, these conversations they talk about influence our thinking and how we live our lives and how we approach science and study still today. And yet, of all the legacies 
ever left and of all the lives ever lived, the human life that has made the most impact, the legacy that has spread the furthest across the earth and lasted the longest is the life of the one human being who ever lived that life fully for the purpose of God. And his name is Jesus Christ. It's the best known name, it's the best known legacy, it's the most impactful event in human history was that cross and that resurrection. Why? Because he lived his life fully for the purpose of the Father. He lived his life fully in the kingdom of heaven. And it's what we choose to be our our kingdom that will govern how we leave our legacy. What will be on your tombstone? Leonard Ravenhill, a great evangelist from a prior century, wrote, has this written on his tombstone. Are the things you are living for worth Christ dying for? Makes me wonder, is my life a life of worth or am I wasting it on the worthless? Because a life worth living or a life of worth is worth living. And the cross of Christ says that my life is worth the very life of God. And when I, when I live it with a sense of that value, when I approach life and make decisions and interact with people with a sense that he gave his all for me, then I can ask, how would a, a redeemed person, how would a, a child of God make that decision, interact with those people and live this moment? Because Whatever I choose will have an outcome and will have an impact and will have a cost and a consequence. So I can invest my moments and my time in things that that bring lasting consequence. I can invest my time in things that will pass away. And one thing I know is that sin has a price tag. It has a cost to it. I've heard it said for, for years that sin will take you farther than you wanted to go. It'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay and it'll make you pay more than you ever intended to pay. It's enticing on the front end, but it has a bill due. But here's the good news. Jesus paid the cost for all your sin. 2,000 years ago, he covered it all, not in part, but in full. And when we realize not the cost of our sin, we realize the price Jesus actually paid. And then and only then can we recognize our true value. Don't underestimate the cost of your sin. It cost God his everything. And that means the life that you can now live is worth something. You have a value to God. And so if you ever wonder if you matter and if, you, and if your, your life has meaning or worth, know this, that before you were ever born, God gave his all, his very own son, because you are, mean that much to him. You are valuable. You matter. And Jesus taught about the kingdom of God while he was on earth, and he shared parables to, to help us understand what that is. Two of those parables are found in Matthew 13 where he talks about a pearl of great price and he talks about a a vineyard, a piece of land that had a treasure in it. And and in both cases, when this thing of great value is, is found, the one who finds it sells everything else they have to go purchase this one thing of greater value. And here's the principle of the kingdom of God. Will you give away the worthless to obtain the priceless? Are you willing to sacrifice what decays and goes away for that which will last for eternity. Because to live a life of purpose is also to live a life crucified. You have one life, live it crucified with Christ. Galatians says this, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but he lives in me. The life I now live in this body, I live by faith in the one who loved me and gave himself. In Mark chapter eight, just the, those few verses before saying, what does it uh, you know, profit us to gain everything and lose our soul? The writer says that Jesus called to himself his disciples and the crowd and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus had a cross, but you and I have one too. Every day we have the option where our will and God's will cross to say, not my will, but yours be done. Colossians 3 says this, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, 
where Christ is. He's seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. And you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other because you have taken off the old self and its practices. You have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. If we're gonna live a life on purpose, we have to also live a life crucified. We have to be willing to put to death those past ways, those, those ways of dead end living, the things that seem right to us, but the end is destruction. Are we willing to put those aside? Am I willing to live with the world crucified to me or is this world still my fascination? Does it still have my heart? Does it still consume me? the comforts of this life, the the resources and things I can accumulate while I'm here that'll one day go back in a box. You see, our salvation from those things and from that sin that costs us, it cost God something. It cost him and Jesus sacrificed his life. We can return to him no less than our everything. Romans 12 says this, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There it is again, that transformation of mind to live for the purpose for which we were created by the creator. You are given life on purpose and for a purpose, to live it with purpose and to live it crucified to those things that are leading to bondage and death and destruction. But it costs us in this life if we're going to have value. Leonard Ravenhill, whose tombstone I read to you earlier, also said this in his sermon, What is Life? An experience with God that costs nothing is worth nothing and accomplishes nothing. If it costs nothing of us, then it does nothing for us and it's worthless to us. You have one life. Live with purpose. You have one life, live crucified to the old ways. And you have one life, live it resurrected. Live this new life. It's for freedom that Christ set you free. It's to be alive that he gave his life. He died his, our death so we could live his life. Truly live. The son who sets us free, and that makes us free indeed. Why would any freed person willingly return to slavery? Why would anyone made alive and resurrected return again to death and the grave? If God has made you alive in Christ, then live. Live this life in his presence and by his spirit. Ephesians 2 says it this way, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. You followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. That kingdom's important. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions and it is by grace you have been saved. You're not only saved from something, you're saved for something. You've not only been brought out, you've brought in, been brought into. Live this life and live fully alive in Christ. Romans 6 says, we died and were buried with him by baptism so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Are you living a new life today? Old things passed away. Jesus said in John 10, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full more abundantly or or another translation is more than expected, more than you could ever think or imagine. 
And this is the life believers live, fully alive to God through the power of the Spirit. You have one life to live. Live it truly alive. Live the resurrected life. You have a purpose and you have a path, a way to, to walk away from things that were, were hindering and binding and destroying and a way to walk into things that are life-giving and, and fulfilling and full of joy and hope and God's presence. But now you need the Nike principle. Just do it. You have to actually live it out. You have to walk it out to live alive in the Spirit. We have eyes. See. You have ears. Hear. You have a mind. Understand. You have a heart. Love and live. Live crucified and live alive and live for the King of kings. You have one life to live. Live it in the kingdom of God. You can either, either, either live for the kingdoms of this world and the kingdoms of men, or you can live in the kingdom of God. There's only two ways. And this whole conversation about a life of purpose comes back to this one thing. Who and what will we give rule over our lives? What and who will we serve every day? Whose kingdom will we live in? And the kingdom of God is not a kingdom you can think or buy or work your way into. It's a living kingdom you must be born into. And that was the conversation that the Nicodemus, the teacher of the law, had with Jesus in John chapter three. In verse two, it pick it up. He comes to Jesus at night and says, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who's come from God. No one could perform the signs you're doing if God's not with him. And Jesus gives the weirdest response ever to this guy that's saying, hey, we know you're God's teacher. And Jesus says, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Well, that's a strange response, isn't it? Nicodemus comes back with the obvious reply, I've been born, I'm alive now, how am I gonna be born again? Am I gonna go back to my mother's womb? Like, how does this happen? He's thinking only of the natural. Jesus answers in verse five, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Only the Spirit of God can make you spiritually alive. And we go on in that conversation to verse 16, John 3, 16, a passage made famous by poster boy at football games. We all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have a life that's everlasting. And that believing only comes when we're born again by the Spirit. And that believing, as Pastor Marty taught us last week, is, is more than thinking. It affects our behaving, our belonging, our becoming. It's not what we think we believe about God, but it's that which uh, our life's actions and our associations and our pursuits will have said we believed about God when our life is returned to a dash and the piece is put back in a box. What then will our life say we believed? It's not what we think that we believe. It's what we live that we believe. That Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. It's about the kingdom of God. What kingdom will we live in? The kingdoms of this world? The kingdom of the ruler of darkness? It's about who you're living for. And can I tell you this? You're either living for God or you're living for the kingdom of the ruler of darkness. Now, you may think, no, I'm living for myself. You are deceived. There are only two kingdoms. You don't get a third. If you think you're living for you, you're really living for the one who hates God and therefore he hates you and has deceived you to believe that you're pursuing the things in your best benefit. And that's what he did in a garden thousands of years ago. God's holding back from you. But if you'll pursue this on your own, if you'll take charge of it, if you'll put yourself as king, but listen, when we took that step to put ourselves as king and make, try to make ourselves equal with God, we did so based on the input of the enemy of God. That was not an original human thought. And when you think you're living for yourself, those things you think you are freely pursuing are actually your bondage. They're actually your chains. 
But Jesus gave his life to set you free, to bring sight to your eyes, to make you fully alive, to take what was dead and resurrect it in your life. So that you can live a new life and you can live free in the one who sets free indeed. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Believers live not for the kingdoms of this world and not for the pseudo kingdom of self. We live for the kingdom of God. We live for the king of kings. That's my king. That's who we sang about today. He is Lord of lords. He's Lord of creation. He's Lord of life. He's the God of all time. He's the God of all resource. He's the God of all power. He's the God ever present. He knows all. He sees all. He's in all. It's all from him. It's all for him. It's all unto him. And until we acknowledge and, and recognize that, we're living a life that's a false life. It's a life that's truly a dead-end life. But he's come to set us free from that life and to invite us into his kingdom. And only when we serve the true king can we live a true life. You have one life. You have one life. Live it on purpose. Live it crucified. Live it fully alive and resurrected and live it in the kingdom of God. And I'll add one more thing. Live it longing. Live it longing for God's presence. Live it longing for his return. In 2 Corinthians 15, we're, we're, we're told that this one who left is coming back someday. We know, and Jesus promised that if I go, I will come again. So we know that this king is going to return. But can I tell you this? Living for the coming of Jesus is not a stagnant, way of living. It's not an escapist way of living. I wanna encourage you in this. When you think about what it is to live longing for Christ's return, that's not to just sit around saying, God, please show up and judge all these evil people. Set everything right and take me out of here. When are you gonna set me free? And I know that, and I don't wanna minimize when we live through the pain of this life, we live through the evil and we live through the suffering and the destruction that we long for that salvation, we long for that redemption, we long for that day that we will see him as he is and we will be like him. But can I tell you that that longing is not meant to be something that we just hold on to and hunker down and wait for it to happen. It's a longing that's meant to give us purpose for every moment we live until then. It's a waiting and it's a desiring for God to be present, but it's also a desiring to bring him present. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It means that we begin to live for the things that he lived for. Stop asking God to bless what you're doing. Start doing what he's blessing. Quit putting together your plans and saying, God, I've worked it all out and this is where I'm going. Now would you please make it effective? Would you please just put your stamp on it, God? No, say, God, what are you wanting to do in my life? What do you value? What are you working toward? And here's what he values and what he works toward. He values the outcasts. He values values the isolated. He values the brokenhearted. He values the cast down. So when, when he values them, then we should reach out. If that's who he values, he values the widow, the orphan, He values the hungry. He values the naked. He values those in prison. Scripture tells us this is what true religion is, to live after the things that Christ lived his life, to bring the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven, to set free those who are bound, to heal the brokenhearted, to give sight to the blind, and to awaken those who are dead in trespasses and sin, to live a new life. We have a purpose every moment if we're gonna live with longing for the return of the king. You have one life. Live it with purpose. You have one life. Live it crucified to the old ways. You have one life. Live it resurrected and fully alive in the power of the Spirit every moment. You have one life. Live it for the King of kings and in his kingdom. And live it longing for his return. And live it faithful every moment until then. Because we must work the work of him who sent us while it's day. The night is coming when no one can work. We have a purpose. If you have breath in your lungs, God has a purpose for that breath. If you woke up this morning, God has a purpose for your day. There's a reason you're here. He prayed in John 17, don't take them out of the world, Father. Keep them from the evil so that by the way they love one another and by their presence, the world may know that I am the one you sent and that you are in me and that I am in them. Make them one as you and I are one, Father. That's Jesus' prayer. He came to give your one life purpose 
and not just a purpose that's gonna happen someday after you go in a box, but a purpose that'll give you meaning every moment of every day until that time. God has a purpose for your life. And that purpose requires you to live on purpose, to value your life as he's valued you, and to value your moments because they're his gift, and to use them not only for your own life, but to make a difference in somebody else's life. Could you stand with me this morning? As we close every service at Calvary, we give people an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Maybe you say, I've not been born again. I'm still living in those things that I know are a dead end. I still found my, find myself bound in those addictions, bound in that greed, bound in pursuing the desires of the flesh, bound in pursuing the values of this world and putting all my resource and effort and my dreams about things that someday are just gonna go into a box or be handed off to somebody else. But today I wanna know that if my moment came today, that I would stand in Christ's presence fully alive because I have surrendered my life to him. That's you I'm describing it today. You need to make Jesus Lord of your life. You've not done that. If you're honest, you'll say, I'm living for me. I've not lived my life for God. I've not lived crucified to that old person. I've not taken off that old man so that I could put on the new one and be born again and live in the kingdom of God. If that's you I'm describing, I wanna to count to three in just a minute. When I hit three, just raise your hand up high and say, I want to take this moment and announce that Jesus from here on is Lord of my life. I recognize he's the son of God and he died my death so I could live a true life, fully alive in him. If that's you I'm describing and you need to make Jesus Lord. When I hit three, raise your hand high. Don't be slow, don't be shy, don't be ashamed. You're in a room of people that may be strange to you, but we're not that strange. We've all raised that hand or need to, and we've been praying for you. You're in a room of people that care about you and have been, been praying that God will do something powerful in your life. We pray for these moments because all heaven rejoices when one person turns from dead living to become alive in Christ. So if that's you and you're ready to make Jesus Lord of your life, on three, put your hand up high. One, two, three. Just wave at me. One, two. I see you. Three. Anybody else? Wave at me so I can see you. Four or five. I see you. Anybody else? Wave at me. Got five over here. Anybody in the middle? Six, seven. Praise God. I see you down here. I got you. Anybody else up in the cascade? Anybody? All right. This corner. I'm looking around. I'm looking around. I'm at seven. Anybody else? Anybody I miss? All right, praise God. I counted seven hands, but I don't always see everybody. And me seeing you isn't what matters anyway. God sees you. But why do you do this, Sean? Why do you count? Because you count to God. Every, every number we count is a name and you have a story and your story matters to God. We're just letting you know that every single individual, you matter. God has a plan and purpose for your life. So if you raise that hand, we wanna pray a prayer of faith with you right now. Or if you too ashamed or, or fearful to do that, this prayer is still for you. We're gonna pray it with you. It's just a simple prayer that acknowledges Jesus as the Son of God and commits our life to living for Him from this moment on. Are you ready to pray, church? Say yes. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. I confess I'm a sinner. I need a savior. And you are the risen son of God. You are my savior. From this moment on, I declare you as Lord of my life. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise for new life. If you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, whether you raise your hand or not, if you prayed that prayer, if today you made Jesus Lord of your life, your next step is baptism. We're gonna do that in just a moment. You can come right down here as Pastor Marty already shared. We're ready to receive you. 
And so we've got sh- shirts and shorts and we got hair dryers and towels. You'll, you'll be good, I promise. If you wanna be baptized today, you can do that. But everybody, uh, just stay put. If you can celebrate this baptism with us, stay in the room. Those who are being baptized, now is your moment to come down here to my left. You'll, you'll meet somebody there. Those that are already prepared are heading that way now. Come on, let's give a praise for all those that are being baptized today. Church, let's celebrate new life of purpose in the name of Jesus. Calvary, let's worship today. And let's celebrate with each person that's getting baptized today. Come on. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony The sons and daughters Bought with blood and washed in water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started Oh, and our God will finish what He started dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony now I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony.
I'm not letting, letting the rocks climb without joining the chorus. They're under the nose to make the whole money. Here's the song of the angels, the hell of the ages, with all of the earth and heaven symphony. Let's declare he's wonderful. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy He's merciful and powerful Who are we talking about? That's my King We declare the glory Give Him all the honor All together worthy Who are we talking about? That's my King There's no one before you Yes, we will adore you All of this is for you who we talking about? That's my king. That's my king. Yeah. That's my king. That's my God. That's my shepherd. My protector. That's my king. That's my rock. That's my anchor. That's my King, that's my God, that's my Shepherd, my protector. That's my King, that's my Rock, that's my Anchor, my Defender. Who we talking about? That's my King. We declare the glory. All the honor, all together worthy. Who we talking about? That's my king. We declare the glory. Give him all the honor. All together worthy. Who we talking about? That's my king. There's no one before you. And yes, we will adore you. All of this is for you. Who we talking about? That's my king. Who we talking about? That's my Keep on praising. Oh, we praise you. Oh, let praise be you. That silence is the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift Him high Will all creation cry inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Hey. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. You cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever. This is 
what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift Him high With all creation cry God we praise you Let's praise God today Amen Can I bless you on the way out? Can I bless you? The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his love surround you and his grace flow through you. May you have an incredible week. Amen. See you guys.